rescue. So we're going to talk about IMARDIS, um, our integrated marine data and information system. Um, I'm one of the team, I lead the IMARDIS, and I have with me also Thomas, Thomas Prebbles in the audience, um, one of the uh, team who is around for, to talk to others about it if you're interested. So to put IMARDIS into context, and particularly from the Blue Growth perspective, um, it's part of a programme called CCAMS. There have been two rounds of funding for CCAMS, European Regional Development Funding. Um, CCAMS 1, uh, led by Bangor University, working with Swansea University on the west, extreme west of Wales, set out to really drive blue growth um, in a very broad brush approach. It's a five-year programme, uh, moved in then about two years ago to CCAMS 2, where the uh, focus has been very much on the marine renewable sector, but that's tidal stream, tidal range, and waves, not wind. So that's been our focus. So the, the fundamental building blocks of CCAMS 2 then are the collaborative research. Collaborative research between individual researchers within the CCAMS team and industry. They sit down together, industry has questions, where shall I put my kit? What's the seabed like? What will be the interactions with the biota, for example? The questions are then turned into um, uh, research questions, and uh, for the, which form the, the fundamental building blocks of the, of the CCAMS program. And this slide here gives you an example of some of the sorts of uh, um, um, machinery which is being deployed by the industry, some of the questions that are being raised, for example, about uh, interactions uh, with uh, uh, marine cetaceans. And there's a, two or three logos there from a range of about 40 different commercial organisations that we work with closely during this programme. So research questions are formulated, <coughs> and I would classify most of the research we undertake as falling into that, that sort of data-intensive science uh, domain. We collect a lot of data. It's not spatially very extensive. However, it is very high frequency, and it does encompass the intertidal, it encompasses the near shore um, and coastal. It ranges from uh, the uh, deployment of uh, unmanned aerial vehicles through to intertidal <coughs> laser scanning, through to offshore surveys, um, inevitably involves numerical modelling, um, and uh, these, uh, this slide just gives you an overview of the sorts of uh, science that's being carried out. It's against that background, then, that we began to develop a concept for IMARDIS. This need to make sure that one, legacy data was secure, that new data was secure, whether it be from fixed-point observational systems, moorings, landers, spatial offshore, offshore surveys, or from those intertidal surveys. That data is transmitted in near and real time. We developed an IMARDIS database, mindful, of course, of the complex landscape of data and information provision within the UK and in Europe. We then turn that data into usable information in order that industry can apply it and can make decisions. So we can see this transfer that Jochen referred to earlier from data to science to societal benefit areas where what the commercial organisations want is that de-risking of business decisions. In the sort of application areas here, which are particularly relevant, of course, to the renewable sector um, as it begins to embark upon the development of a new industry within Wales. The argument, we started out with a blank piece of paper, great place to start. We started out about two years, 18 months ago. Um, the, the arguments for a cloud-based solution have been made very eloquently already. And um, Sebastian, in particular, explored the same, in fact, solution we've gone for, which is an Amazon uh, web, um, uh, Amazon cloud solution to the development of IMARDIS. I want to talk a little bit about further about the rationale for the architecture, which I'll talk to you about in the next slide. In my view, the challenge we face in, I would say, this area of data, uh, data management and information provision is to ensure that we're creating not a solution in search of a problem, that we are driven by an understanding of what our users require. Having that blank piece of paper meant that we could use the great dialogue we already had in place with our users to build a system that was fit for purpose. I also include the researchers within CCAMS as part of those users. We had to win that classic battle with academics to win the battle for hearts and minds, to move away from this concept of my data 
to open data. Uh, sorry. Um, so it's clear that we had to work with existing standards, we have to interface with European data infrastructures, that's why we're here, we want to make sure we're doing that well, we want to avoid replication of existing capability, and we wanted a system that was capable of ingesting and disseminating data in real time and very high resolution data at that. But fundamentally our approach has been driven by this desire to streamline the workflow, to understand the workflows that were in place for our researchers and to make sure that what we were coming up with was better than what was in place already. So the overview of the systems architecture is here. Um, it's based upon a series of, of back-end services, um, including a data storage service. I'll say some more about that. I'll talk about metadata. I'm not going to say very much about the CCAMS Observatory and Armada Streamed. That is, in fact, in place, and we are bringing live data in from a coastal observatory on the Northwest Coast in Colwyn Bay. These services are made available through an API, and the advanced services can then be developed upon that. The left-hand side is largely developed. The products and services the, uh, and the portal are to be developed, and I'll talk more particularly about the portal, because of course we've seen from the outset the potential for third party developers to build applications based upon our infrastructure. So the data storage services then um, are featured in this slide. All data in its original format is stored within the raw file storage. This data can then be processed, processed into a variety of different other file stores, the point cloud storage for high frequency bathymetric data or intertidal laser scanning data, for example. Four minutes. Five. Um, okay, the parameter store, perhaps for time series data from CTDs, ADCP, for example. The AV store for our visual and acoustic data, visual data from underwater cameras, for example, for habitat mapping, or the acoustic data from our studies of the abundance and distribution of cetaceans in the IOC. We also have the capability being developed for model output store to store results from our hydrodynamic, transport models and coupled physical biological models. This approach then also provides us with the potential for um, other processing and meeting user needs. For example, it's possible through the services available within, for example, point cloud storage, uh, um, capability here to subsample the data sets to produce bathymetry at different scales depending on user need, so to subsample the data sets that we hold, for instance. Again, we started from a blank piece of paper but mindful of what was in place already. So our structure has been driven by the desire to uh, ensure that we were MEDIN compliant, that's a Marine Environmental Data and Information Network. Uh, for the UK. And our approach has been to take a, a hierarchical approach to simplify data entry, thinking about the workflow that our researchers are using and to, to uh, create a system that will, is more likely to engage them in this process, to simplify where possible, to re reduce repetition. And so you can see, for example, with cruise metadata, we only enter that metadata once. And it's linked to all the subsequent metadata records on that cruise, whether it be for bathymetric data, for IDCP, grab samples, and so on. These are truly multidisciplinary cruises that we operate. The next slide then uh, gives an overview of a metadata manager. This is largely been written by Tom, who's in the audience here. And this manager is a, 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 a mechanism for orchestrating the back-end services, but it also provides this uh, mechanism for this simple metadata creation, allowing us to create targeted templates, again, thinking through what's the simplest way that we can create something which will engage uh, others. Uh, it has the potential to auto-extract metadata, the example there, extracting geometry from um, a, a pathometric file. We've ingested 14 terabytes, large files capability, and of course, it's really important that we can publish metadata both in multiple searchable catalogues, including MEDING and including others on demand. And we have this linked data for storage services through to the metadata records. I'm just going to draw your attention to the right-hand side here, to the portal. Uh, we're just about... It was important, I made this point before, we actually 
need to know what our users want. As we design this portal, this will be the world interacts with uh, uh, iMardis. We ran a workshop earlier this year. It was very successful and gave us great insight into what people actually wanted within the portal and potentially in terms of other advanced services. It's a very rich um, uh, workshop report in terms of information. I'm not going to go through this uh, in any more detail, but you can seek it out on the web. Um, to finish off then, we've got these key backend services in place. We've got meta schema data, we've got the metadata manager, we're cataloging. We've got this web front end, this main presentation layer, and I would say we will be putting out a tender. So if there are any commercial third party developers here in the audience interested, we can tell you more about that. That tender will be hopefully uh, released before Christmas. And I'll leave it there with 58 seconds to go. Thank you very much.